And welcome to the second video in this series about winter precipitation forecasting. I'm Dan Lowe and I'm a senior operational meteorologist here at the Met Office. In this video we will be looking at why snow is so difficult to forecast. Forecasting the amount of snow that an area will get is a big challenge as there are a number of factors which will affect the snow both as it falls through the atmosphere and when it impacts the surface. This makes forecasting the amount of snow settling in a particular area very difficult. As snow falls it can be changed by its surroundings. This image shows how snow can be altered as it falls to give rain, freezing rain or sleet. As you can see from the diagram, the difference in height between the two hills means they get different types of precipitation at their location. The dotted line running across the diagram is the freezing level. This is the height above the ground where the temperature of the air drops to zero degrees. When snow falls beyond this level into the warmer air, i.e. above freezing, it starts to melt. The distance the snow has to travel before it reaches the surface will mean the difference between snow, sleet or rain at the ground level. But it is not just the freezing level that affects what type of precipitation arrives at the surface. Other effects such as sub-zero layers can have a dramatic effect. For example, where there is a layer of air closer to the surface that is below freezing in temperature. As the melting snow falls through a sub-zero layer, it can refreeze, making freezing precipitation at the surface more likely. And there are other factors to consider as well, such as the fact that an inland site is more prone to snow than a coastal one, due to temperatures at the surface being influenced by the local surroundings. In winter, land temperatures tend to be much cooler than sea temperatures. This makes it easier for snow to settle inland than near the coast, as the freezing level is likely to be close to or at the surface inland, whereas it can be kept a little higher near the coast by the warmer sea. Another key factor that affects the type of precipitation we get at the surface is the intensity of the precipitation itself. When snowfall is heavy, it starts to melt as it falls below the freezing level. This melting process uses up energy from the atmosphere, which has the effect of cooling the surrounding air. Because the air has now been cooled, the freezing level is now lower, which means that the snow can fall closer to the ground before starting to melt, allowing more snow to reach the surface. It is true that this process happens to an extent regardless of the intensity of the snow, however, unless the snowfall is heavy, the effects are minimal. Some of the lesser and not immediately obvious variables can also have significant effects. Shadows during the day from hedges or buildings will keep temperatures lower throughout the day, allowing them to fall even lower overnight as nighttime cooling occurs. This allows snow to settle much more readily on the cooler surface. Valleys tend to be cooler at night as cold air sinks into the valley from the hills. This is why you will often see snow melting on the top of the hills but staying longer in the valleys. It also means that any further snowfall could easily settle and be potentially deeper than at the hilltops. The urban heat island effect will have a great influence on snow amounts falling across a wide area, as can be seen from the diagram. From our knowledge about the freezing level, we can see here that any snow falling over the city centre will be falling through warmer air for longer than snow falling over the rural area. Therefore, snow is less likely in the city centre. In our next video, we will look at the differences between our public weather forecasts and those available via our industry specific services. Thanks for watching. To find out more about the science behind our products, please email openroad at metoffice.gov.uk.